Okay, this is a demonstration of the solution for our homework number four. The setup is given by um, cost is equal to 10 plus 2q. Right away we can calculate the marginal cost because we know we will need we will need it later. It's equal to 2 and then we have the demand which is equal to q minus uh, equals 26 minus p. So uh, let's skip questions one and two just because they're just calculations and if we move on to question number three and try to find out what is firm A's residual demand if firm B produces QB units. Well, if firm B produces QB units, QB, that quantity will be combined with a quantity of firm A's output in the market demand. Now, from here we can express quantity A as a function of price and the output of firm B. Quantity A equals 26 minus P minus whatever firm B produces. That's the answer to 3. Now, to calculate marginal revenue of firm A, we first need to find the inverse demand. Now, how do we find the inverse demand? We'll just carry P over here. P equals 26 minus quantity B minus quantity A. Now, remember the magic formula for marginal revenue. If we have the constant, so the intercept and the slope, we just keep the intercept the same and double the slope. So marginal revenue of firm A equals 26 minus QB minus 2QA. That's the answer to question number four. Question number five, what is firm A's quantity if firm B produces QB units? Question number five is exactly the same as question number seven, it just asked differently. Question number seven asks you for best response function, but number five is asking you for firm A's quantity given a quantity of firm B, which is basically the definition of their response function. So how do we calculate, uh, how do we find out quantity? Very simple, marginal revenue A equals marginal cost A. Now, we can take marginal cost from above, we know that it's equal to two, Marginal revenue is given right here, so we carry it over and get 26 minus QB minus 2, QA equals 2. Now we want to express QA as a function of everything else, so we carry over QA to one side uh, of the equality sign and keep everything else on the other side. So 2QA equals 26 minus QB minus 2. So now, 26 minus 2 is 24. Everything will need to be divided by 2 to get um, QA. QA equals 26 minus 2, 24 divided by 2. 12 minus QB divided by 2, 0.5 QB. This is the quantity that firm A would produce given any quantity of firm B. Now, question number 6. What quantity should firm B produce so that QA the firm A will not enter the market. The question is basically asking, what is QB if QA equals to zero? Well, if QA is equal to zero, zero equals 12 minus 0.5 QB. What do we get? QB equals 24. It turns out that 24 is also the price that would prevail in this market if it were a competitive market. How do I know that? Well, because if the market were a competitive price would be equal to marginal cost. If marginal cost is equal to 2, what would be the output in the market? 26 minus 2, which is 24. So in other words, if firm B produces so much that the price drops to marginal cost, there is no reason to firm A to produce anything. Now, question number 7 and 8, asking you to write reaction function of both firms. So firm A's reaction function, as we know already, is equal to 12 minus 0.5 quantity B. Since firms are identical, we don't need to go through the full, the full solution procedure to find that the quantity B as a function of quantity A is given by identical formula. Now, how do we solve for the equilibrium given these two uh, reaction functions? Well, I'm skipping, skipping number 9, we can do the drawings at the end. Let's move on to number 10, which is the calculation of equilibrium quantity. Well, one thing to remember is that trick that if 
two forms identical in every single respect, it is safe to assume that in equilibrium, in Cournot equilibrium, quantity A will be equal to the quantity B, if both forms produce, that is. Now, if we can use this assumption here, what we can do, we can take one of these equations, let's take equation 1 from here, QA. QA equals 12 minus 0.5 Q, I almost wrote B, but wait, QB equals QA, so I can write QA, carrying over this one to the left, I get one and a half QA equals 12, which implies that QA is equal to 8. Now, remember, QB is equal to QA, so by the same token, QB is also equal to 8. We found quantity of both firms. Once we know that, we can calculate the total output in the market. What is the total output in the market? The total output in the market, which is still question 10, is QA plus QB. So the total quantity is 16. Knowing the total quantity, we can calculate the market price. What is the market price? Now, the market price can be simply obtained by using our expression for the demand. Demand is 26 minus P, which means that the inverse demand is equal to 26 minus market quantity. If market quantity is 16, price is equal 26 minus 16 equals 10. Once we know the price, we can calculate profits. Now, the firms are identical once again, and it's very easy to calculate profits for one firm only. So, let's take firm A. Profit of firm A equals price that firm A will receive for, the, for its product in the market, which is 10, times output of that firm. Now, remember, we calculated the output of that firm, and it was equal to 8, times 8, minus, and now we need to go back to our cost function. The cost function says 10 plus 2q, so we need to subtract 10, and then we need to subtract 2 times the quantity, which is 8. What do we get here? 10 times 8. I very frequently rewrite this expression like this, 10 minus 2, and then I take out 8 outside of the brackets, just sort of an easier way to visualize the profit without the fixed cost. What do we get? 10 minus 2 is 8, 8 times 8, 64 minus 10, 54. So, profit of firm A is equal to 54. <laughs> just checking if you're paying attention. No, I wasn't. Just wrote too fast. Profit of firm B is equal to 54 as well. And that's the answer to this problem.